In the first video of this three-part series on Cardinal Health, I gave you a great argument as to why Cardinal Health is a huge player in the pharmaceuticals distribution space. They got logistics, manufacturing, and customer relationships, which give them the opportunity to win in this space. But do we actually trust the management team here? Also, are there any hidden issues in the financial statements or in the direction that the company is going right now? Also, are the shares low enough that give us a sufficient margin of safety to its intrinsic valuation if we buy the shares at the current price? We're gonna be covering all three of these questions in this video, video number two of our three-part series on Cardinal Health. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. You're watching the number one channel for people that wanna retire early, so let's jump right into it. I mentioned in part one that the recent legal and regulatory challenges that the pharmaceuticals industry has gone through in the US has put a stain on the names of the publicly traded pharmaceutical distribution companies and has really beat up their share prices. And to be honest, I think it's a little bit overdone, which is why I think Cardinal Health can be a very decent value play for our portfolios. In fact, Cardinal Health is being valued so low right now that it has a free cash yield of approximately 11% and the earnings of the company are growing at approximately 5% every year. That's a 16% annualized expected return every year. Now guys, in part one of this three-part series, I analyzed the business model and investigated whether the business has favorable long-term characteristics. In part two, this video, I will gauge the competency and ability of management and will look at the valuation of the company. This is a super important video. Is it cheap enough to buy with a sufficient of margin of safety right now? And of course, you guys already know, I'm gonna make a case that it actually is. In part three, we're gonna do a full walkthrough of the free, fully downloadable model on Cardinal Health, which you can grab from the description below. And don't forget guys, the best investment that you can make is by smashing that like button. It really helps you to know that this channel provides valuable content and thus you'll share it with more viewers like you. All right, no more time wasting. Let's jump right into the analysis. When it comes to assessing the competency and willingness and ability of management teams, over the years I've largely discovered that the best way to answer this question is not paying attention to what management is saying, but actually paying attention to what they're doing. And I like to look at three areas. The first one is capital management. The second one is I assess the operations. And the third one is I analyze their financial statements. So let's jump into it with their capital management analysis. What exactly is management doing with their generated cash flow? This takes us straight to our favorite statement on the financial statements, which is the cash flow statement. You can see here that in 2020, 2019, and 2018, they on average generated approximately $2 billion of free cash flow. So what exactly are they doing with it? Well, you can see that they fortified the balance sheet by paying down their long-term debt by approximately a billion dollars each year. They also paid dividends in the amount of approximately 500 million each year. And finally, you can see that they bought back shares with the remaining cash. So all of these things are very good to note. This is a cash generating company that's fortifying the balance sheet and using the excess cash to pay dividends and buy back shares. That's really good to see. Now I do have a couple of points to note here. Now what I got from their Q3 2021 conference call is that with the sale of their Cordis subsidiary and a tax receivable amount, they are expected to generate approximately $2 billion in excess cash this year. And they've stated that they expect to pay down an additional $1.4 billion of debt, which allows them to largely get to their leveraged target. And that's really good news for us because what it means is that they're left over with an additional $600 million, which they likely will use to purchase securities. And that's really good news for us because it means that they could decide to buy back an additional $600 million of treasury securities over and above what they're already planning to buy back this year. And that's absolutely accretive because they're buying back at such a large discount to the intrinsic valuation. Don't forget guys, when you buy back securities, when they're undervalued, it is a good thing. Also, I think it is within the realm of possibility to expect a dividend increase this year. Okay, so that was the capital management analysis, but how are they doing operationally? And this is an area that I'm starting to become a little bit concerned with. The business is a low margin business, and so we really have to pay attention to the margins as management continues to grow revenues. If you notice here, revenues have increased by close to 70% since 2014. This is a very good thing, but notice that gross profits have only increased by 33% in the same time period. So what does that really tell us? It tells us that they're growing revenues while sacrificing margins. This isn't the worst thing in the world, but it does pose a challenge when valuing out the company. What margins should we value in the company? They achieved a gross margin of 4.49 at the end of 2020. This was a year that was impacted by supply chain headwinds from the COVID pandemic. They're also expected to feel a similar impact in 2021. And so we're seeing that the nine month gross margin is approximately 
4%. The good thing for us here is that they've given us guidance in fiscal year 2021, so we can largely build that in. With 2022 and beyond, I think a safe margin going forward would be approximately 4.5%, but this is an area that we're gonna have to wait and see on. So if there's one area that I would expect for you to watch, it's this area here. I would expect that if margins continue to come down, I would be asking, are they increasing revenues at such a rate that it continues to increase gross profit? If they're not, we're gonna be running into an issue here with their operations. So we'll absolutely keep an eye on this as owners of the business. Now, finally, I like to look at the financial statements to adequately assess the willingness and capability of management. And of course, I've already mentioned before, but this is a slam dunk. They're focusing on bringing the debt levels down and their Q3 2021 debt to assets was approximately 15%. With the 1.4 billion expected pay down, I expect that to decline to around 12%. That's really good, guys. And as I mentioned before, as you can see that in 2020, 2019, and 2018, they on average generated approximately $2 billion in free cash flow. They use that cash flow to largely pay down debt, pay dividends, and buy back securities. So overall, there's no issues that I'm seeing with the financial statements. This is a very cash flow positive business and they're rewarding shareholders by buying back shares and paying dividends. The only thing that I see with the financial statements that's an issue is what I mentioned previously, which is the margins are coming down. So we have to just be careful to make sure that we're forecasting margins at the right rate. Now, the final question to ask when researching Cardinal Health is, is it selling for a favorable price that reflects a good margin of safety? But first, if you received any value from this video thus far, please smash that like button. It really helps YouTube know that I'm providing valuable content and thus you'll share it with more viewers like yourself. And of course guys, don't miss out on part three of this three part series as we'll be doing a walkthrough of the free to download Cardinal Health model, which you can grab from the description below. So in order to not miss out on that video, please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to be notified when I upload that video. I'm noticing that not a lot of you have actually hit that notification bell that have subscribed to the channel. It's approximately around 12%. So get that up guys because you'll actually be notified when I upload these videos so it's really good if you want to keep up to date with the research that's happening on this channel now let's get right into that fourth question is the price that the shares are trading at a favorable discount to its intrinsic value does it give us enough of a margin of safety now of course in the next video I'm gonna be going through the nitty-gritties of modeling this out but for now I'll mention that I'm valuing this company at approximately $85 a share and they are currently trading at approximately $59 a share you can see that when you download the model which I of course I put in the description my value Valuation use both an EPS and a free cash flow per share valuation methodology. I believe that both are appropriate for this company and they largely will get you to the right ballpark. I'm discounting the terminal value at approximately 11.5%, which I believe is overkill a bit for this company, but there could be some real future risks to the business from the lawsuits and additional regulations. So why not just be conservative here? Also, what you will see when you download the model is that I've also taken that full opioid liability at its full value and discounted at 5% over the next 18 years, which is the agreed upon timeline of payment. I used 5% because I just wanna be super conservative. If I used a higher discount rate, of course the valuation would be lower, but truly I feel that inflation will probably run at approximately 5% over the next 18 years. So at $85 a share, I'll apply my 35% margin of safety, which I will use for this business. And so I won't purchase this company for anything over that 55 to $60 per share range. Now, as of the recording of this video, the share price is in that range, which reflects an approximately 11% annualized free cash flow per share yield for a company that's growing at 5% a year. This gives us a 16% annualized return expectation without considering capital gains from the revaluation in the security, which is absolutely possible. Now guys, don't forget, this is not a recommendation to invest. I encourage you to do your diligence and come to your own decisions. And of course, if you're not sure, always speak to your investment advisor before making any purchases. But I love to provide research and that's exactly what I've done here. So of course guys, that's it for this video. I'm really looking forward to seeing you in part three. See you guys.